We're back on the big show with an old friend, and what a thrill it is to see the frocks of Jane McDonald. Oh, I tell you, I only do it to get dressed up, as you know. <laughs> it's such a thrill to see you, and we've even come dressed the same today. I think so. Are we in mourning? We're all in black. I know we are, but we've got a little <laughs> pinstripe thing going on there, which is really fashionable, I believe. But mine's Asda George. What is yours? Uh, mine is very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't Asda, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you, can, you can tell the difference. Listen, it's so nice to see you, and I know we keep doing this every single year, but it is amazing that you're still here and getting bigger and bigger every year I don't know how you're managing it well that is not weight obviously Alex we'll just get that right <laughs> um, I don't know how it, it's it's wonderful it, it is absolutely wonderful and I owe it to the great public and the fans out there who keep coming back and supporting me I'm extremely grateful as I am with everything you know it's been 12 years I've been at it now flipping heck and uh, you think it's going to be 15 minutes you know because usually it is especially from a, a reality show but the, the public have got right behind us. I give value for money, I think, with the show as well. It's an, you know, a, a big production, fantastic singers on it, an 11 piece orchestra. You know, I don't make any money, but who does? <laughs> <laughs> At least you're happy, though. I mean, it's interesting. It's a year ago since we talked on the programme. I can't believe it. It goes so quick. It really, really does. And this year, for some reason, it's gone quicker than normal. Um, so it, it has, they say that's a sign of getting old, don't they? My dad used to say that, the older you get, the quicker it goes. So I'm really getting quite worried now. <laughs> But it's great fun. I, I do love every bit of my job and I'm very, very lucky to be able to say that. It's interesting because I was thinking back to the first interview we ever did, which was over the phone. You'd just come off the cruise and you were 26 stone and I was 36 stone. And I said to you back then, I think the reason you'll be successful is because you are you and not a fraud. Mm. There may be embellishments of nice frocks and a bit of showbiz here and there, but I think people feel they know you and that's so important in this business, isn't it? Well, it's lovely that they do know me so intimately. I mean, my whole life has been public for so long tragedy tragedy <laughs> oh dear they've been through everything with me and also if i got a bit big for my boots my mother would give me a good slap wouldn't she really so and also all my mates keep me grounded you know I, I actually work with my friends and there's not many people can say that so i don't think i'll ever for me this all happened to me when i was in my 30s and I'm sort of who I am now. I'm not going to change. I've tried being posh. It didn't work at all. It didn't work at all for me. So, no, it's it, no. I love the fact that people accept me as who I am. That's nice. It's a funny life as well, isn't it? The people you get to meet, especially this time of year with loose women and the job I do. I mean, you just bump into people that you never thought you'd ever meet. We're from the north. We shouldn't be talking to each other. Well, that's true. I mean, yes, we don't do that, do we? You know, but it, it is great. I mean, I've met some fantastic people on loose women. And, and even the loose women, they're great friends. But we do, we, we meet all sorts of different people in this in this wonderful business called show that we're in. And it, and it is great. I don't see many people in theatre land because we're constantly on the move. So I don't know what anybody else is doing. But it, it is great to see so many people still going out there and doing it. We need theatres to keep alive because otherwise we'll be all be out of a job, won't we? This is the coalface of show business now. This is where the hard work happens because TV, let's face it, is just you nattering with your mates. Mm. This is where you've actually got to deliver because coming here once is fine. But I mean, I think we were here about four years ago when you did this the last time. They won't come back if you're ripping them off, will they? Well, I hope. Well, no. And, and no, they shouldn't. If you think you're not getting value for money, then don't turn up again. I really do try to, to add a little bit more element every time I come back, something different in the show. I do an awful lot of talking now. I do you know, a lot of jokes, which I think that's just nerves, actually. <laughs> it is a bit like Loose Women with a few songs thrown in, really. But the public seem to know what they're getting now. The, the fans, you know, they really get who Jay McDonald is now. And, and that's fantastic. It's taken me 12 years. But I think I'm finally getting out there and, and the public, it's great. Let's talk about mistakes you've made this year because you go on that Loose Women every day and it's live and you say things. Um, mm -hmm. It's all right. Let's talk about the mistakes you've made this year because I know your text is forever going when you open your trap and say things and offend people and get on people's nerves. Um, what have you done this year to offend people? Everything. Every time, every time I come off air, I'm thinking, oh, I shouldn't have said that. And my poor other half, you know, he had no idea that that was going to happen. And I did say to him, look, you do realise I'm on a live TV show where we talk about our partners all the time, but he just doesn't watch it. 
But of course, he's in the searches. He goes out every night and they're saying, you've got to cook for her. Is it right you don't do this? I've, I've heard she's training you like a dog, you know. And I think, poor lad, he's got to put that. So, yes, there's always something. Mother's that used to it now. She's, you know, got a thick skin. But um, but it is every time we come off, our, our phones are going, I can't believe you said that. Or, But it's just... It's, it's having a, a cup of tea with your mates, isn't it? And that's how people perceive loose women to be. And I certainly hope they continue to. Have you actually seen your other half this year? I think I've seen him about four times. He's still <laughs> very nice. I tell my fans to say hello to him. You know, and they all get pictures and send them in. I think, oh, yeah, that's right. He's got a bit of stubble tonight. Or he's, you know, bless him. Texts me a lot. <laughs> Apparently you occasionally do a debut on their show as well. You'll just turn up at theatres if you just fancy singing a tune. Yeah, Frank Allen is very good for that. He'll say, come on and sing, you'll never walk alone. I'm going, no, no, I'm not doing it. And then, uh, then he'll look for me at the side of the stage and I can't help myself. I've just got to go on. But they're a fantastic band. And it, it's uh, the atmosphere that they create as well. It's good for me to go and watch somebody else. So, and, and otherwise we would never see each other if he didn't come and see me sometimes and I didn't go and support him we would just never see each other so it, but they are fantastic the searches let's talk about your life generally and how people perceive you because I think you're taken very seriously now and you've got over that thing of being the woman off the cruise I mean you still talk about it and joke about it but it must be nice for you now to be taken as a credible artist because you've proved yourself to be successful in the record industry which isn't easy and certainly not now and and touring is the hardest thing to do because you can bring them in once but can you bring them in twice and then year after year after year and you're not just doing a tour it's a continuous tour What's going on there? I know I must be mad. <laughs> Actually, now you put it like that, I'm thinking, what the heck am I doing? I think um, this is, I don't know how to do anything else. This is what I've done all my life. This is 12 years in the clubs, actually going out there, dying a few nights and thinking, why did that happen? And then all those years on the cruise ships, running around costume changes, doing 10 shows a week. This is still a walk in the park for me, just going out and doing two hours once. You know, when, when you're on the ships, you have to do two, two shows a night. So I, I suppose I don't take it ever for granted. And, and I think, you know, once you've been on telly, everybody thinks that's it, you're made now, you don't have to try as hard. But in fact, you have to work three times as hard to maintain it. But I, I wouldn't know what to do. Whatever it is I'm doing, don't, don't point it out because I haven't got a clue why they keep coming back. But I'm so grateful that they do. I keep changing it, keep tweaking it. And the fans just love it. It's, it's the fans who keep you where you are. And you've got very dedicated fans. I mean, there aren't many people who have as many dedicated. There's Cliff, certainly, and there's Daniel O'Donnell, and there's Michael Ball, mm -hmm. and there's people like you. I mean, they will queue for tickets and camp out to get a seat to your show, and the people who follow you around. Is it because, again, it, going back to the thing of they think they know you and you allowing them to know you, is that is that your key to success? I have no idea. <laughs> and if I knew what it was, I'd be bottling it. I really, <laughs> really would. As I said, I, I, I have no idea why there is such a loyalty there I'm just extremely grateful that it is there and when you walk out and you see the first four rows still every single night being the same people you think go to Barbados <laughs> what are you doing here again you know and it, it is wonderful that they turn up like they do and I don't know we, we have a fan club that runs as well and they get to meet and greet with us and things like that and I think a lot of it is that I mean Daniel definitely sees his fans and and we do the same. We can't do a signing every night because there's a hundred concerts a year now. Where good grief, I'd just be in the priory, wouldn't I? <laughs> Actually, it's not a bad idea. I might start doing it again. No, but it, it would be complete exhaustion if I went out there and signed every autograph that I used to do. So now we have meet and greets where the fans in the fan club can come and meet me personally and get everything signed that they want to do, and that seems to work really, really well. It's nice as well that Loose Women let you perform from time to time at the end of the series and things like that, because we need to remember you are fundamentally a singer, mm. although you're a chat show host and an interviewer as well. Well, yeah, they are extremely good with me and um, that is the most perfect show for me to do because I've always done that as my second job and they've always known that's been my second job. So it's not been very difficult for me to say, actually, I just need a bit more time off this time. Can you sort it out? So. When I'm a bit quiet on the singing, mind you, that's not happening at all, quiet on the singing bit, then I do a lot more Loose Women. But, you know, it, it is quietening down a little bit, but I'm still on Loose Women. I've just signed another year's contract with them. So uh, I love that show, but it is difficult fitting everything in at the same time. 
it's almost been hoist by its own baton because a lot of the big stars of which you're one, I mean, there are four really, in my opinion, you've all kind of had to go off and do other stuff like Colleen's doing her thing at the mm-hmm. moment and you're doing your thing. And that does kind of take away from the programme because I don't know whether I'm like you, but when I switch on, I kind of want to see you on there or Colleen on there or I'm thinking, ah, I'm not bothered today. I love you for that. <laughs> but I won't tell the others. Shh, we won't tell the others that, will we? But it's great that they're bringing other people in because, you know, otherwise Colleen and I and Denise and Carol would never have got the chance to do it. Um, and Sherry, I mean, there are certain figures on that show that have been there for an awful long time and it's like everything else. Who you invite into your front room is a great honour. So for you to say that, that is very lovely of you. But I will, you know, all of us are back, you know, and, and doing it all as much as we possibly can. I know Colleen's going to be going back in the in the autumn and the winter like I will be. So keep watching. <laughs> Colleen reckons it's you, Carol, her and Jackie in the old days was the dream format. Have you got your dream for? Exactly that. Really, you know, that's a terrible thing to say. But I love Linda Bell- Bellingham. Lisa Maxwell is fantastic now as well. And Linda Bellingham, I, I think she's amazing, classy lady. And she can turn her around to anything. She's a real pro, is Linda. So, But it, it's great when you get different people to work with because, like you said, we do discuss a lot of the same topics. But when you've got a different panel on, it's got a completely different feel. Like when they're talking about sex when I'm not there. Sorry? I can't even say it, you see. I get all flustered. Thanks. Sex, sex. When they're talking about that, I'm like Mary Whitehouse. I go all flustered. Whereas if Denise is on it, you know every single graphic detail <laughs> that is going on. You do know the ins and outs, don't you? Oh, I've learned such a lot. I've learned such a lot. I've been so naive. No wonder all my blokes have gone. <laughs> well, you do talk about their shortcomings. Uh, Favourite guests, very finely. <laughs> Who do you like having on? Who do you look forward to? Because most of them have been on and then they mm. come on again. Well, the, we've got a massive American... Uh, sort of patronage now I mean Josh Groban I always seem to uh, end up doing a little bit with him if you know what I mean singing that is <laughs> we've got a bit of a flirt going on and if I wasn't an engaged lady I'd definitely make a play but obviously he's not going to go for me is it but anyway yeah. um, we had Bette Midler on Whoopi Goldberg but then the, the, the favourites that we've got people like Paddy McGuinness Dave Spikey coming on we've got our favourite Sue Pollard who was always <laughs> a scream because you know you can relax a little bit and they just take over the show which is fantastic it's always lovely to talk to you. I'm going to let you get on with the show. The, the dressing room just isn't quite glamorous enough. It's got a touch of Ikea about it. being q 1947, hasn't it? Oh, I tell you what, if they only knew. I know. I didn't know you could get a three-watt bulb. <laughs> <laughs> There's a moth over there that's lost. <laughs> Jay McDonald, thank you for being you. And keep on keeping on. And I know you will be. If they want to go to your website, what is it? It's uh, www.jane-mcdonald.com. Is that a hyphen or a dash? It's, I don't know, you tell me. I just, it's on my computer, I don't know what it is. And we're not going to list the, the places you're going, let's list the place you're not going, because, I mean, you'll be everywhere. No, I am absolutely <laughs> everywhere. At Theatre Near You, just check the website and we're all there. It would be great to see everyone. Jane, I love you. Thank you for talking to me. I love you too. Mwah.